Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're talking about chickens. And this is my backyard basically. These are all my chickens. There's probably about 80 chickens and maybe another 20 ducks. And uh, this is something I def definitely recommend all you guys get into. Yeah. Um, the reason is because in a an end of the world type of situation, you're going to need to eat something. And um, like I've discussed in other videos, particularly in that uh, video I did about the second, um, you know, second civil war. Uh, go back and look at that video, particularly the freezing and starvation section, and you'll see why you need uh, to have a food source. Okay. Now, storing food is fine, but the thing is that, you know, when you're storing food, you know, sometimes a lot of bad things can happen. First of all, in a shit-hit-the-fan type of situation, if you have your food stored in the basement, you know, what will typically happen is your, you know, your sunk pump uh, that pumps the water out of the basement is going to probably stop working because there's no electricity. So what that means is a good chance that your basement is going to flood. Um, you know, also a good chance that, that rodents and other animals, you know, like mice, are going to get to some of your food. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying don't do that, but I'm just saying have another plan. And um, chickens are really a really good backup plan um, because, uh, you know, chickens basically eat bugs. Okay, as you can see, the dirt's been dug up pretty good here. You know, that's, that's from them digging up the bugs and... Um, you know, and eating it, and basically converting converting bugs into into high protein, and, and basically making me eggs. Uh, now the question becomes, how many chickens do you need? <clears throat> um, well, basically, if you're a family of four or five, you need, you know, if you have 25 chickens, they will produce enough eggs for you to eat through the summer months. But what happens is when you get into the winter months, if you're in a cold area of the country, um, the chickens don't make many eggs during the, the winter months because what happens is that they, um, you know, they, they basically they, they use their internal energy to stay warm rather than make eggs. So basically, I determined that I needed about a hundred chickens um, in order for them to produce enough eggs uh, to feed a family of five. Okay, so so, so that's what I determined. Um, so that's one of the things that you have to factor into this, your winter plan. Um, in the summertime, I mean, basically the chickens, um, you know, they will, you know, they'll dig up the bugs and eat them uh, and they'll eat the grass. I mean, I was, right now we're still in March, so the grass hasn't started growing. But as things start growing out of the ground, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll start eating that. Um, and uh, what, I, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to plant some corn in the, you know, off to the side over here probably. So I can, um, you know, and basically that corn will, uh, you know, basically I'll use that corn, I'll, I'll, I'll break it up, and then I'll also use that as a food source. Um, through the winter months, okay, for me to, you know, basically the 100 or so chickens that I have go through about 200 pounds, which right, which right now is costing me about $40 a week. So they go through 200 pounds a week. Um, of, of uh, what they call scratch, which is a mix of corn and other seeds. Um, so, so just keep that in mind, how much these guys eat it through the winter if they do not have, um, you, know, you know, basically if, because they don't have a way to eat. Because right now the snow's all melted, but a week ago this ground was completely covered in snow. Uh, and it was hard. You know, when the ground gets really hard, um, the chickens can't. They can't scratch the, um, you know, they can't get under the ground to get to the bugs. So basically, they're completely dependent uh, on you feeding them, okay? So, so, so that has to all be factored into your plan. Um, now, you know, as far as an end of the world type of situation, the way I envision it is that, you know, the city is going to run out of food within a couple of days. Um, you know, most people are not going to have enough fuel in their fuel tank uh, to get um, you know, to get too far, uh, but a lot will. I mean, there will be a lot of people uh, from the cities or from the outside cities that will basically come into the countryside, um, you know, desperate, you know, desperately hungry. Um, if this happens in the wintertime, you know, what's going to likely happen is that they're, you know, that their cars are going to run out of gas. 
the, you know, and obviously they can't run the heaters in their car and they're probably just going to freeze to death inside their cars. Okay. Uh, if it happens in the summertime, they're going to be able to get a lot further. I mean, they can, they'll probably be able to find, walk their way. A lot of them will end up, end up walking here. Um, and now the situation is that, that, you know, these people are starved. Um, they're, 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 you know, they're in the process of dying and their kids, you know, have either, you know, if they have infants, they're, they're about to die. If they have children, they're starving and they're dying. I mean, I mean, let's face it. The fact is that in, in a, an end of the world type of situation, uh, in a world war three type of situation, 90% of the population is probably going to die off. Okay. They're not going to be, you know, our, our, our current population is dependent. It's so, it's so great that it is dependent on industrial industrialized farming okay um you cannot you know today you cannot feed this type of a population with a farm like the one i have here okay um you know this this is a family farm that will basically provide for my family and that's it um and if i try to you know try if, if, if i try to feed more people than that basically my family is going to starve to death um so basically you know a person in a situation like mine has to already have it in their head what they're going to do, you know, um, how are they going to deal with those with those people that are basically going to descend upon this this property, starving, famished. They're basically, you know, they're, at that point they're so starved they're not even thinking right. Um, they are they're, they're basically going to look like like something out of a zombie movie. Okay, well the only difference is that they're going to be holding their kids or their dead kids in their hands, um, and and basically, you know, I mean now you got a situation here is like well. You know, whose kids are going to die? Their kids or my kids, you know? Um, so, so, so that's the reality of the situation. Uh, now, the um, I mentioned earlier that basically through the winter months, you know, I have to supply about 200 pounds of, of, uh, of feed for these chickens. Now, obviously, that source is no longer going to be available. I'm not even going to be able to get to the feed store because I'm probably not going to, you know, I mean, I'll have some fuel, but not enough to be going back and forth. Uh, so the question becomes, how am I going to feed these chickens through the winter months? And, um, you know, basically the food's going to come to me. Um, basically all these zombies that are going to descend upon me trying to, you know, you know kill me and, and, and eat these chickens. Well, what am I going to do with the bodies? Well, chickens are meat eaters. I mean, they will eat anything. I mean, they will eat each other. If one of them gets sick, they start pecking at it, they kill it, and they eat it. Uh, chickens will absolutely eat humans. Um, and, 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 uh, you know, as a, you know, the best thing that you can feed a chicken is meat and, and the egg production basically goes, shoots way up. Um, you know, the more, the more meat they eat. So basically all these zombies that are going to come here trying to, trying to steal, you know, kill me and steal these chickens, um, are going to basically end up food for the chickens. Uh, and that's really the only thing I can do with them. The, the ground is going to be frozen hard. So I will not be able to bury them, you know, so that, that wouldn't make sense anyway. Um, but, but that's what, that's what is going to most likely happen. Now, I'm not a person that dwells on this. I mean, it sounds like I sit here thinking every day about this possibility. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, it's like I plan my taxes. I put a little bit of thought into that, you know, and then I move on to the next thing. You know, I plan, you know, you know, uh, you know, what I'm going to plant this, this, uh, this spring, put a little bit of thought of that, move on to it, you know, so, so it's, this is not something that I dwell on and, uh, you know, it's not something that I, that I even expect to actually happen in my lifetime. However, the odds are that it will have, you know, it may not happen in my lifetime, but it will happen sooner or later, you know, maybe 25 years from now, maybe five years from now, maybe a hundred years from now, maybe 200 years from now. It will happen. Um, you know, these things do happen. They've, they've happened re repeatedly um, throughout history. You know, things happen. Volcanoes go off. Uh, asteroids fall. Wars happen. You know, so, 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 so that is a realistic situation to happen at some point in the future. Okay, so, so it's not like, you know, we're completely fantasizing here. Uh, you know, basically it's a backup plan. Everybody's got to have a backup plan. Now... One of the things that you want to be aware of is that, you know, in the, you know, in the summertime, it won't be so bad other than, you know, as far as, main, you know, it won't be so bad as far as maintaining the chickens. There's two, two, two small roosters out there fighting, if you look at them. Oh, by the way, the roosters are off to the left, are, are sectioned off to the left, left side. Uh, you basically don't want to have more than one, you know, one rooster for every 15 hens because the roosters are, are pretty brutal. They will rape your hens to death, basically. 
So, so, so the roosters need to be sectioned off to the side. Uh, and basically, if you're going to eat any birds, you eat the roosters. Um, but, but going back to what I was saying, in, in, the, in the summertime, um, it, it is a little bit easier to, to feed them. Um, you know, um, however, like I said, if, 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 if the shit hit the fan type of situation did happen in the summertime, you're going to have to deal with a, a higher security situation. You're going to have, you know, a, a way more people trying to, um, you know, raid you and take, you know, kill you and take whatever you have because basically they're not freezing to death. They're, you know, they're starving to death. Um, um, you know, in the winter time, okay, you'll have less people trying to invade the property to, to steal and raid. Uh, but the, the difference is that, that the, the winters are brutal. You know, once the temperature goes below freezing, um, you know, you, you know, you, it's hard, you know, first of all, you, you, you don't have any, any, any water that you're able to run outside. So if you plant, first of all, like the eggs that you get from these chickens, I mean, they're usually covered in shit. So you need a way to clean them. Okay. Um, so, so, so that's, that's an immediate situation that you're going to have to deal with. How do you clean your eggs? Um, you know, you know, I mean, obviously you'll, you'll find some way, you know, you, you can melt snow, but, but, but that's, but that's a, an important point. Now, if you're going to try and eat one of those roosters, um, you know, you know, cleaning a rooster, first of all, you know, after you cut its head off, um, you, you now have to get the feathers off of it. And the way you do that is basically you boil hot water, you dunk it, you know, um, for a few seconds, and, and basically then you're able to pull the feathers off. And that's a real pain in the ass uh, because you're sitting there, you know, plucking feathers. It takes almost like something like, you know, usually when I, when, when I kill the roosters, I kill maybe about six in a day. And it usually takes me about four hours to completely clean them, you know, between plucking the feathers and, and cleaning them, cleaning them up. But the, but the feather plucking is what takes the longest time. Um, they do make machines for that, but, you know, they cost like $400 and, of course, they require electricity. So that's not going to help you in a shit hit the fan type of situation. Um, but here's the thing. After, after you pluck the feathers, right, you, you reach up inside and you grab the heart. The heart is about the size of a baseball on these things. And when you pull that out, basically everything comes out with it. So all the guts, everything comes out with it, the lungs, everything. Um, now, basically, you basically you need a lot of running water, okay? And the problem is that, in, you know, once the temperatures get below, you know, even 50 degrees, I mean, doing this outside with bare hands, I mean, it is. Your hands will freeze up, okay? So that's one of the things to be aware of. Like, I generally don't, you know, like, like I'm waiting for the weather to get a little warmer. You know, it's right now it's in the 40s. I'm waiting for it to go up to the 50s, 55s, because there's a couple of roosters over there that I gotta get into the freezer. Um, so, so that's one of the things to be aware of. It's really hard to gut and clean animals um, when it's freezing outside. Because a lot of people think they're just gonna go hunting or something. You know, if they're starving and they're gonna catch a deer, and you know, well, how are you gonna clean it? You know, how, you know, if you don't have running water, you can't do any of that stuff. Um, and and uh, you know, so so these are all things for you guys to think about. Um, but, uh, all right, just some thoughts I wanted to share with you guys. I mean, we, you know, most of the time we're talking about guns, um, but, uh, you know, there's other things besides guns for you guys to think about if you're preparing, uh, or, or not even preparing, just thinking about, you know, a, an end of the world type of situation, um, you know, and being prepared for that, you know. Um, now, now what is going to happen is you've got a lot of guys out there with guns that don't have a food source. So, so there's a lot of guys, you know, I mean, a, a lot of the guys that, 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 that you know, you, you're talking to nowadays on the internet and chatting with, you know, the gun guys. Well, a lot of those guys, are, you know, if you got food and they don't, a lot of those guys are going to be, you know, coming to you for food. Um, so, so that's also, you know, something for you guys to, to keep in mind. Okay. But. All right, I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions or comments, uh, please post them.